what I'll do is go ahead and uh, start the presentation and walk everybody through the uh, some background on Torrey Pines, um, show you guys what we did on the project, and then um, after that, turn it over to Dave, and he'll show you kind of the look back analysis that uh, we did with him uh, once the project was completed. Um, what you see here is basically just a uh, kind of a rough overall project schedule to show um, show you guys basically what we had to deal with on the project. Uh, it was a very fast track project that we uh, completed construction in about 18 months. It was a $40 million research facility, 108,000 square feet. Um, and basically, this was a project that you know was a big highlight to the area down here in South Florida, and there was a, a big need to get under construction uh, as fast as possible. So as you can see here, it kind of walk you through when we were originally awarded the design build contract for the project um, in late October of 06. Completed programming pretty fast in January, and um, you know obviously going into a GMP with the city in the middle of February, which um, you know roughly a, a five month span from being awarded the contract to by the time we went to GMP with the uh, city of Port St. Lucie. As we go through that, the progression of the documents, um, when we actually really started construction in April and completed the project um, August 08 of last year, uh, and roughly four months ahead of schedule from what we were originally anticipated for the project. Um, kind of throughout programming, we had to set some pretty uh, substantial milestones to be achieved. Um, this is kind of a, one of the tools we use to establish those milestones uh, for the entire team, you know, ourselves, the design team, and the owner most of all, who um, you had no experience uh, building any type of facility like this before. You know, he basically spent most of his time in, in a research lab um, you know, doing experiments. So it was a whole new uh, ball game to him to understand what it takes to actually build something. So we outlined this to, uh, you know, determine what the milestones we needed to achieve to keep design going and meet certain deliverables to keep the project on track. Uh, a couple of sizable showstoppers that happened during the project, um, you know, basically during the design, uh, the programming phase that um, could delay the project substantially if we did not have such an extensive, uh, you know, pre-construction knowledge of these types of facilities within, a, within Suffolk. You know, one of them was just a you know, you think it's a, it's a simple option of where you're going to locate the offices in a research facility, whether it's on the core of the building or around the perimeter of the building in relation to the labs. Um, so this was a sizable decision that the owner wanted to keep these um, offices basically on the perimeter of the building, and we were you know, trying to steer him towards more of a, a effective and efficient um, location of, uh, in the center core of the building um, with the labs on around the perimeter. Um, so without really having any, you know, documents at the time, all we had were a couple, basically four floor plans of the building. Um, you know, we were able to extrapolate the data that we had at the time, and um, myself and our estimating department basically drew up what the plans would look like for each option. Uh, by doing that, it allowed our estimating department to do a cost comparison of a rough order of magnitude of what those, uh, you know, the differences would be to locate the offices on the center and around the perimeter of the building. Um, this is kind of an example of a rough order of magnitude of what that would have uh, cost, you know, to allow the owner to make a basically a sound, um, you know, cost-effective decision, uh, and you know, understanding the economics behind uh, his decision as well. So uh, early on, the project we were able to do this and uh, provide this information to him. And even though you know it basically was double the cost to put the offices at the perimeter, he still chose to do it. And um, you know, luckily he was, unfortunately, he was, um, he had the information at hand to make a. Uh, you know, a uh, pretty effective decision at the time. Uh, moving into building information modeling, uh, you know, the stuff that um, we really focused on in Torrey Pines is mainly the uh, three-dimensional fabrication and class detection. Um, estimating and scheduling was something that we utilized uh, Dave and Vico's help with after the project was completed. Uh, but we did utilize, um, you know, I guess the 3D portion of BIM uh, during the programming phase. You know, some of this is just kind of some of your basic block and stacking that helps a uh, helps any owner, and especially one that has not experienced in doing a project of this of this sort, um, to kind of three dimensionally see what the end product is going to be. Um, you know, during a programming phase when you're trying to establish you know, kind of the block and stacking and an overall concept of the design. Um, you know, going back to pre-construction and how fast we went to GMP in this project. Um, you know, there's a lot of high publicity behind this project. Um, you know, in order to basically break ground uh, as soon as the city wanted us to, we had to basically have a contract in place. Um, well, unfortunately, um, when they wanted us to break ground, we hadn't even gotten to the schematic phase of documents. Um, so, you know, the city basically prevented, presented us with the challenge of, you know, putting together a sound GMP to go to contract with uh, within a three-week window, uh, when only having program documents at the time. 
Uh, so we accepted the challenge. Um, you know, basically going off four floor plans of each floor, each floor of the building, and uh, we're able to basically put together a sound GMP that um, you know, would allow us to go to the contract with the owner <coughs> uh, in a timely manner and basically allow us to break ground um, on the project sooner than everybody anticipated. These are some examples of the you know the floor plans we had at time at the time, um, and some other examples of you know how we utilized um, you know some of our pre-construction efforts to keep the uh, to establish this GMP so early was um, you know, basically deciding you know what the building envelope and structure would be. Um, you know, if you're trying to put together a GMP off of nothing, you, that's something you probably need to you need to establish right away um, in order to know what you're pricing up front. So, you know, basically using our knowledge, we basically put together a spreadsheet and analyzed every possible envelope method and structure method we could propose for the project, um, looking at cost and time, and ultimately examining every possible option, you know, um, precast choice and um, tilt-up construction basically started to be the most cost-effective and timely um, method to, you know, start construction sooner, finish sooner, and uh, cost-effective material-wise as well. Um, just some other slides here showing some of the supporting documents that helped put together this GMP. Um, this is a room area finish schedule that we actually developed um, during the programming phase to establish what each area would entail. Um, another example of supporting documents is the owner decision approval matrix that we use to uh, basically drive the project. And uh, some sheets here of just the Q&A that we had in our GMP. And, you know, everybody says, you know, having a and a in any GMP is pretty common nowadays. Um, and a lot of, you know, especially owners look at it from a standpoint of, well, all this is an, is an exclusion list. Well, I would like to preface that, you know, our Q&A was about 25 pages long, and there was no exclusion in it. It was a narrative of how we're going to build the building. Um, so, you know, like I said, being that we were in the programming phase, you know, every division had a narrative below it describing how we're going to build the building and with what material. There was no exclusions of we didn't have this, we didn't have that. It was we're going to have this and it'll be installed this way with this finish. And ultimately the overall end result was a very detailed GMP that we went to contract with with the city of Port St. Lucie. Um, you know, one of the, the highlights of this is, you know, and the reason we kind of tell this story um, leading into this whole BIM discussion is that you know, we went to contract very early with the owner, uh, only ho having program documents at the, at the time, and ultimately, you know, had zero change orders throughout the entire project and able to maintain the contract price until completion. And, you know, there was one change order that was issued at the end of the project, and it was a deductive change order of a million dollars that we gave back to the owner when the project was completed. Um, and ultimately, that was uh, the contingency that we carried in the project that we didn't touch. Um, so moving on from here, um, kind of going into the three-dimensional modeling that we did with Torrey Pines. Um, you know, talking to Dave Wilkinson with Vico earlier, you know, I guess the term is Little BIM, um, and that's pretty much what we did at Torrey Pines. When we started the project, you know, our intention was we were going to utilize BIM. Um, at the time, you know, about roughly two and a half years ago, we didn't really know what BIM was. We, it was newer, still new to the industry as it is now, um, but we, you know, we made a, uh, a commitment that we would utilize BIM. Uh, well, as we got into the project, we started to understand what BIM actually was, and realized that um, you know, some of the consultants we had on board didn't really have these capabilities to achieve what we wanted to. Um, so kind of rolling with the punches with this thing, we established, okay, well, we're going to do it on our own, and we're going to basically um, uh, work with our subcontractors to utilize BIM on the MEP and structural side. Um, you do basically utilize the three-dimensional modeling, um, clash detection, and uh, conflict management. Uh, this is a snapshot of the overall building and the MEP systems, um, you know, going down to the left of the page showing the cooling towers, chiller plants, uh, emergency generator up to the very top of the page, which is the mechanical penthouse, uh, showing the air handlers um, and outside air intakes, and obviously the piping throughout the building. The red flags you see in this picture basically denote the clashes, um, and maybe familiar with Navis Works, imagine a model like this. Um, you know, basically this is how we, um, you know, handle our coordination meetings. Um, so this is the level of BIM we utilize in Torrey Pines, mainly from a three-dimensional standpoint, um, utilizing conflict management. And, you know, I'd like to preface that, you know, by utilizing this, we saw dramatic um, time savings 